What's up guys? Welcome back to day three of the automatic case swap and It's been a pretty good day. Uh, yesterday. I didn't vlog nothing, uh, but I was here actually getting my hands Dirty and Mercer can attest to that Yeah, he was he was actually here clean. Uh, so I don't want to show you just yet. What's going on in the base? We're gonna stand over here and talk to you for a minute uh, I cleaned up the engine bay. I got a lot of the rust proofing off uh, a lot of scrubbing uh, we stripped a lot of the firewall off, took the sound dampening on. Uh, it cleaned out the engine bay a lot, but um, I'm going to get it detailed once the swap is done. Uh, today's video, we are doing some test fitting. Yeah, I would say that's what it's called. Uh, test, test fitting, seeing what we have to notch, see what we have to customize for the auto case swap. And uh, I'm going to try to squeeze the funny clip that Mercer has sent me earlier in this morning into this vlog because it, it's, it's gold. Because uh, you would say it's a tank, wouldn't you? And we're yeah, just talking about yeah, the, tranny, the transmission. Which is the transmission is definitely a tank. Yeah. Uh, auto transmissions. It's not something you can pick up on your own. And unless you're like, Jesus Christ. And I've seen this guy pick up some pretty uh, pretty heavy things on his own. So for that, that's a testament of what he's saying. Yeah, it is. It's a heavy uh, tranny. So, so uh, I'm going to turn around the camera and show you exactly what Mercer's been doing uh, while he's been up here early and he's gonna go through everything so far that he sees that he's gonna have to do and some little minor setbacks we might be having but uh, we're gonna go through it together as you guys can see the boy put a K in the EL guys like, oh, let me, oh my god it, it belongs Kev it does it belongs it belongs uh, it so as you guys can see engine bay Firewall is clean. Uh, we're not doing the EPS just yet because uh, time restraints, right? Kevin was able to squeeze the EL in now because he has a brief period where he can do the swap. So for now, what Kevin did is we cut the power steering line and he looped it there for now. Uh, if you're doing it long term, you will, you will blow the rack with all the pressure. Short term, like we're doing, so hopefully in the spring we'll just pop in a new one. Uh, like the EPS and everything and then we'll have that situated we are not gonna be running the AC as of right now because some of the lines do not match up we got to do a mix of like the OEM line and then get like a custom line done so we're not worried about it it's still winter and it will be spring still so it won't be too hot but hopefully by summer we'll have that figured out and we'll have AC running on it oh we'll definitely have it figured out by then oh yeah yeah this guy genius uh, but right now, the issues that uh, we have seen thus far and possible solutions are the passenger side, sorry, passenger side mount, driver side mount. It's not like a Hasport mount kit where it bolts right up, but Kev has found some... There's a kit? Well, no, the automatic? No, not the automatic. Oh. I mean like the, the manual kit, like oh, yeah. the Hasport so, mount lines up a little bit better than the Innovative. For like standard? Yeah. No, all mounts. Well, motor. All I mean, for the motor. Be, motor mounts are gonna. They're just gonna line up, regardless of the brand. They're gonna line up. This here has never been done. So. But the passenger side would mount out like a standard one, regardless. Yeah. So. Yeah. We are having that little bit of an issue where it's not lining up 100 percent to the post mount. But that's due to the suffering. Maybe. Suffering. Maybe. We don't know yet. We're gonna try it out. But yeah. Uh, but that side there, nothing. So no, we're nothing. gonna make that now. So right now, what you have is the standard uh, innovative mounts, and the standard innovative mounts, uh, the subframe one, the rear one works with the automatic T -bracket. RSX T bracket, yes, or you... Y bracket, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the automatic front mount from the RSX also works on the subframe. Yep. And now this guy, the reason why this guy's not lined up could potentially be that our sub, because of our subframe. So we're gonna show you. Right over here. Our subframe right now is touching, can you come on this side? Yep. It is touching right there. Let me get the light. Our subframe is touching a bracket, an L-shaped bracket right there. I don't want to notch the sub, uh, sorry, the bracket on the vehicle. I want to notch the subframe. So we're going to show you. I've actually marked it. We'll show you where it needs to be notched. And I think if we notch that, that's going to give us the half inch clearance. 
clearance that we're missing on that front left, right, sorry, front right uh, engine of the passenger side. So, mind the noise. Hope we are noisy. we are in the house of the Lord right now. <laughs> house of God. Yeah, so guys, the, the front mount that comes with the innovative mount kit is obviously for a manual, so you would have to reuse the automatic front one. Uh, I know it's not your thing, but it honestly does help with the uh, the uh, the play because I'm not getting the hardest uh, inserts on on this one. I want to go a little later, bit softer. Later on, we should fill this in with your thing. With your thing, which it, we most likely will be doing that. Because with we, that being said, that's what we used to do back in the day, right? Yes. With that being said, Passport doesn't sell a front mount for any of the swaps. No, they don't. So with that being said, this is up for sale. Yes, if you guys would you like- You wanna put that on the ES1? ES1, does that have one? You know what we have on the ES1? I don't remember. We have the factory one on the ES1 with the, in, oh, uh, the, with the inserts. inserts. Yeah. Well, you think the inserts would work on this? Mm -hmm. no, no, no. It's a different style. So guys, if you want super stiff on your US one, Hit me up. I will sell you this lone front mount. Uh, yeah, front mount. Yeah, that's what it's called. Uh, yeah, and it just. Uh, I didn't drop it. I didn't drop it. <laughs> Almost took a foot. Holy shit. Okay, back to the program. So, as you guys can see, that's what I have to notch up. I'm gonna have to notch out this section right here. So, you see the divot? Just cut it straight down. Cut it straight down. So then, if we cut that, we'll be able to bring the subframe as up. You, yeah, as you guys can see, it's not fully bolted up. Mm -hmm. So, so let's get cutting. Yep. I'll put some music on, and let's try this, man. I'm uh, I'm excited. The reason why oh did I explain this? Maybe I did. The reason why I don't want to cut this L bracket, you can see it like here, right here, on the inside. Um, that L bracket gives stiffness or rigidity to the front rad support. Um, you probably could just hit it with the gun and it's gonna, subframe's gonna do what it's gotta do and it's gonna bend it. Well, you're probably gonna hear some rattling afterwards. Yeah, and, and that's definitely not what I want. No. Um, I want this thing to be smooth, so yeah, any videos that we've looked at um, and Paul has told me. Nobody's ever done this, so this is new things, new uncharted territory, and um, this is the first thing we ran into. Yep. So, let's get this done. This is how you guys know that we don't hide nothing off camera. We show you guys when we hit uh, crossroads or bumps on the road, and then we dissect how to, you know, pass it. And that's how we're gonna cut it. Beautiful. All right, guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed that nice slow video of Mercer cutting the subframe. Uh, don't worry, we're not gonna leave it raw like that. We're gonna put some high heat black paint, uh, scuff it up, nice, nice. But uh, as you can see, that little half inch, oh yeah. Uh, you know what, you might have to cut a little bit more here, Kev. Cause when you went up on that side, see how much closer it got over here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, see now you're hitting right there. Mm -hmm. So we got this side we gotta take a little bit more. Let's How was this side looking? It was good. Good? Beautiful, beautiful. So we're just gonna go take a little bit more off on this side, bolt it right back up and see how we are with the mount. Alright boys, so as you guys can see, now we have a nice little gap between the bracket and the subframe on this side, and now 
that's the piece that I'm gonna just cut a little bit more off. Now we have a good distance. Uh, he bolted it right up. Now we're gonna lower the car and see if we can get the passenger side mount to line up. Uh, 100% now, and if that's the case, then Mercer's are gonna start tackling everything on the driver's side mount uh, and assessing what he has to do there. He has an idea, he's gonna see if that idea will work. Yeah, man. But one more thing. One more thing. After I uh, bring the subframe down, mm -hmm. I'm actually gonna weld this um, because the section that I cut out was tack welded. It was tack welded right here okay. and tack welded right there. So because I cut it, I cut the tack off. This could potentially split, split. so ah. I will clean this all up and weld the subframe part when it's out of the vehicle. There's no way I'm going to get in there right now. Perfect. perfect. Um, yeah. This guy's That's always it. going the extra mile. I you love got it. it. Just in case. This okay. thing's going to see some extreme Gs when it's turbocharged. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, we are going to be boosting the A, well, this is a Z2 series engine now. Uh, we no longer went with the A3, but this is essentially like an A3. Uh, yeah, close. I know it's got VTEC only on the one cam. Guys, BC makes a cam, well, two cams for this, obviously, and just this stock setup with that cam does 200 to the wheels. Nice. Dino proven. I've watched BC's videos on it. Like, it's a serious cam. It's special order. So when we do boost it, you know we're going to do a full super tech head on this thing and go with those cams. All right, let's see what this works. All right, let's see. Um, no. No. God damn it. It didn't work. All right. So, I'm not going to even talk about this. Mercer's going to talk and explain because he was the one uh, getting a good look at everything. So, after we cut what we had to cut, we uh, raised the motor. Or, sorry, raised the bolts. Or bolted the bolts, raised the subframe and the motor. We came here to the front and we are looking at this mount here. Uh, we have a few different options in mounts. We're gonna see which one is gonna fit best, but as of right now, this one that we have is a K20, what was it? Is A3. That A3? Okay, yep. so this is a K20 A3 uh, mount. This is a K24. Uh, post mount and I have a different one uh, the post mount for this motor which is the Z2 Z2? yep uh, we're gonna try them and see yeah this one's already so different try different ones and see which ones are gonna work best because as of right now you can see that the holes don't line up yeah our holes don't line up and once, if you look at it, it is touching here. Um, it's not 100% flat. It's tapered, so that is no bueno. Also, we have Femin issues with a bolt. It's touching our bracket there. Right there, so right where you see to, the red. We're gonna have to notch that area there. Also, so these are the dilemmas that we're dealing with. And um, we're gonna drop the motor now. Drop yep. the motor and the suffering. And this is gonna happen multiple times. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, when you're doing something custom, Let's do it. it's uh, a repetitive little cycle until you work out all the kinks and get everything to work the way you want it to work.
voice. So as you guys saw, Kevin opened up that hole a lot more so that way when you have to service anything, you can reach to the bolt and then you know slide in the bolt that way to get to what you have to do. And then I'll take you guys right over here. That top bracket piece like this, that was on here, Kevin cut that right off, shifted it down. Um, he might add another plate underneath this to weld and then obviously drill the holes out uh, to like kind of bump it up this way. But we are not sure about that yet. We're gonna see if this will help twist the mount straight and line up the holes with the post mount. If that's the case, then uh, we'll carry on from there. He's giving himself a quick blowjob right now. Yeah, man, self blowjobs. All right, boys. So, update on the passenger side mount. As you guys can see where everything is marked off. We bolted it all up and everything, but the mount was still sitting a little bit uh, twisted. Uh, initially, Kevin has to cut the, the mark he made, but he wanted to do step by step because you don't want to cut too much meat off of it. And we're going to have to open up these holes a bit. And he's going to make a shim to the shape of this mount bracket and then weld it on. And then he's going to, after he opens this up, he's going to fill the remaining hole so that way you don't have a lot of play. And yeah. it'll bump up the mount a bit so that it doesn't force the motor to want to sit down kind of thing. Correct. So and the mount will actually sit straight. Yes. The mount doesn't sit straight right now. So, so uh, touching the motor. Maybe the Hasport mounts, uh, the manual Hasport mounts would probably be a little bit better. Uh, we don't know. Uh, it could just be a defect on the innovative mount itself. After all, this would bolt up exactly like a manual uh, engine. So it's definitely this one mount that's an issue right now for either auto or manual. So back to the drawing board. Well, back to the cutting board. boys update so as you guys can see Mercer honed out the holes for the bolts uh, smoothed out this over here uh, as you guys saw in the other clip he cut a piece of quarter inch I believe Kev yeah man quarter inch yep uh, he's got his earmuffs on uh, quarter inch steel so what he's gonna do is he's gonna cut it to shape mm -hmm. uh, and then line up the holes on the mount because uh, we got to come up a quarter inch. Uh, I guess it's just just the way they designed the the passenger side mount uh, could have been a little bit better. But uh, you know, regardless, it is a custom swap because it is automatic. So, yep, yeah. Thanks with the custom uh, swap. You know what I mean? Like uh, if you guys watch guys like Boosted Boys and everything swaps that they did, like K swap in the the Odyssey. The case off in the Subaru at the time, it's all custom, so fabrication is required. So, uh, but it's something that we want to accomplish together, and that's where we're, we're going. And I, I don't have anyone better than Kevin to do it because Kevin is more than qualified, and the guy just does f a phenomenal work, guys. Look at that, it's beautiful. Yeah, man, oh, 100%. This is gonna be so sick dude i'm just as excited for this swap as i ever was with my spooniest one because i just love k's if i could put a k in everything i will and now i'm gonna say i have three vehicles with k's it's, it's fantastic guys guys so we're just tightening up to make sure that the shim that Kevin has made is gonna be a one so by doing that you have to tighten the mount itself as if you're installing it uh, do not worry about this he's gonna shape it up and then weld the whole thing together if everything works according to plan looks like it's somewhat 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 working man I mean it's probably gonna be the best it's gonna get given what we're working with yeah, it's tight. Tighten the mount. Let's see. 
Oh, look at that. Look at those gloves. Bro. He looks like he's going to be uh, inseminating a cow. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Guys, probably not gonna get on camera today, the passenger side mount, because we pretty much already have the idea of what we're gonna do. He's gonna build a plate for the bottom over here, obviously shape it up nice uh, with fabrication skills. Uh, that's basically the issue, the mount itself that goes from here to the bracket here is, is fine. He's gonna modify that as well. But the main issue right now we've been tackling is this, uh, this mount. So now that that's tightened up, how's it looking, Kev? Yeah, it's working. It looks a lot better than when we did it without the spacer. It's a lot more it straighter. Works. Straight. And the motor doesn't have like that little dip to the bottom now. It works. I think it's A1, bro. Okay, boys. So we're not closing off this video. What we're doing is uh, we both got to leave. Uh, we're going to pick up this vlog back on Monday. Uh, he's gonna be where he'll weld that and uh, shape it up and all that and do everything we have to do And then we're gonna tackle the transmission mount the whole purpose is so you guys can see what we have to customize Before actually jumping into dressing up the engine and doing the wiring and everything. So basically we have to assess The mount situation before we could continue with the swap because once that's hundred percent taken care of we can proceed then, right? You can go into steps, then you can proceed into running the harness, running the ECU, uh, wiring up the automatic shift box, the cluster, which we're gonna show you guys how to do it. Uh, pretty sure we're gonna have to repin some wires. Yep. Um, but like I said, we're gonna take you along for that. Okay, so right. we're- so in short terms, um, there's gonna be a trilogy. Oh yeah, shit, I think it's more than a trilogy, right? Because we're assessing everything mount-wise and then Dress up wise, and then inside. So, so yeah. Yeah, there's more than a trilogy then. Yeah, it's maybe awesome. like a double trilogy. It's gonna be a lot of footage. Yeah, that's definitely what we yeah. know. Like so. the whole purpose, obviously, is because we want a K, but we want to give you guys proper information, so you guys know exactly. If you want to tackle this with you and your your builder or your friends, or hey, you probably come, hey Kevin, I want you to do this, what you did to the yell onto mine. Knowledge is all here. Just go back to the videos and help you guys out and make seven gens great again Yeah You look pure vato bro with the, the beanie covering <laughs> your shades, bro. <laughs> I love it my shades? Uh, my shades are all up or my safety glasses are all fogged up right now. Yeah, they definitely are uh, Guys, um, we'll That's see you in the next. Today. Yeah, we'll see you in the next clip guys. So uh, see you on Monday boys in and a couple girls. seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two thousand years later. All right, guys. So continuing the vlog from uh, Saturday, where we were customizing the engine mounts on the Mugen Yale's automatic case swap. Uh, I'm actually on my way to garage scene. I got to pick up some stuff. One, I got to pick up a battery for Rick's R6 that's at the shop because his battery is completely shit. And we gotta give him a new battery, which he has. And I gotta get some battery terminals for the Mugen Yale because we're gonna route the battery differently on the Mugen Yale. You guys are gonna fucking like it. It's different than the Spoonie S1. And that's what I like because both builds are completely different. So we're, uh, we're gonna take you inside. We're gonna say what's up to the boys and get everything and then go back to Mercer's and continue modifying the passenger side and driver side engine mounts. So that way we can start with everything else. Because uh, right now the mounts have to be assessed before we do anything. But you already know that because we already said that earlier in the video. All right, guys. Uh, just grabbing my coffee with me to take inside. Whoop! Uh, it's a beautiful day today. It's not that hot. It's not that cold. Just right. And there we go. She finally locked. Guys, I, I took this CRV for a, a much-needed wash. Like, look how fresh that is. And this is Chris's BRZ. It's looking good. Can't wait till he uh, finally slams this thing because it's, it's like 4x4, four four. it's higher than the CRV almost. But. Uh, oh shit, here they are, here they are, boys. You know, just, uh, you know, vlogging away. You guys already know the homie Chris, the homie Rick. Oh, look at this guy, look at that. Oh man. What's up, dude? Looks like mine. And Chris's nut sacks after we shave. After a marathon of horny sacks. Where the fuck is he? 
Uh, so as you guys know, we're here to pick up some stuff for the Mugen EL and Rick's RSX. So, oh, oh shit! Oh, what's going on with the yeah. RSX? We need a battery so we can stop pushing your car, man. Battery? Which one is under? The Optima? You got the Optima. Like that's it. That one has like sucks. Started for like five minutes. That's it. It, it, I, no, I like it's done. Right. It's done. It's done. I gotta give you a I, 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 I need just, a battery. I think they're just like style points. Yeah, style points. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're gonna carry on in a second. Alright, boys. So, Chris is gonna give us a little treat. He okay. just did the Tomai header yesterday, I believe. Yesterday. On the BRZ. I've heard the, uh, the car on his last video with the catback. It sounds phenomenal. I've never heard it in person. So, you guys are gonna hear it in person it with me. So, it calms down, but. The cold start is loud, ready? I love cold starts. Oh yeah, but it's almost like... Yeah, so if I'm cruising at like, uh, let's say 60, 70, 50 or 60, gear, it's, it's like this. So get, not that much drone inside the car then? It's not too bad, but then once I start like accelerating, yeah. It's Sounds fire. There's that super... Yo, that sounds nasty. Mmm, smells so good. Yo, that thing sounds mint, Chris. That thing sounds mint. Hey, see, like, it's gonna be loud, but this car is definitely gonna be the car I go balls to the wall with, so. 100%. Uh, it just... It needs to get lower. It needs low, man. I, like, I got suspension at look, home. I don't know, my guys, guys, look at the gap pitch. Uh, minimal. Yo, I think, yeah, you oh are. Oh my goodness. I, I have more gap than you. Jesus Christ. She's a dirty girl. This is a dirty girl. But yo, she looks fire. I love this. This cleaned up the front end right. a lot. The orange just didn't suit. No, it doesn't, it doesn't vibe with the car. Because you have the clear LED strip on the headlight. Exactly. It just blends good. Don't worry. I got suspension at home, LCAs, and wheels coming in from Winnipeg, some JDM wheels. Don't oh, it's going to look sick. Yo, then you guys can all see this in person this summer because... We're gonna do round two of our fucking YouTubers meet. 100%. And you guys are gonna see this thing in summer mode after. It's gonna it's gonna be definitely uh, super clean. It, it's fucking beautiful. I'm glad to I got to hear it. Yo, I fucking love it, bro. That <laughs> rumble, bro. It's that loud, rumble. Dude. Yo, it sounds nicer than an, an Impreza. Yeah. Because yeah. everyone always does the Nvidia shit. Of course. Right. That's why I was like, you know what? I'm, my vision of this car is do as many JDM parts as I can, uh, keep it all Japanese. And you not said every, that from the beginning. From the beginning. Not everything's going to be like my LCAs or BWR, but I couldn't find... Well, BWR is shit. Uh, not shit, I mean, BWR is the shit I think I have on speed. Yeah. So and I, they're discontinued. Fucking amazing. Yeah, so that they're discontinued, which is kind of cool, and they're the only company that had, like, polished LCAs that I could find at the time. Mm -hmm. So I think the polish will look best on this. Oh, 100%, bro. 100%. Yeah. But I fucking, I fucking, I fuck with this, bro. Hopefully, in the future, it's gonna be boosted with a lot of power. So that's 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 the goal. Supercharger. I might go turbo with a dump. And oh, I might go turbo with a dump. You sick fuck. <laughs> you, Ashley's gonna join you in the boost life. Fuck there you go. Sick. Supercharger all the way. I love superchargers, but my buddies keep busting my balls to do a turbo. He's like, do a dump outside the. You fender. know what? It's true because you already did a charger technically right? on the HN. So when yeah. and you had. It, it was a tent chance. But it wasn't like it wasn't I like great like yeah. you upgraded it, it was nice, but, but it wasn't like crazy. You know what I mean? I yeah. mean like if you're gonna go balls to the walls. Yeah. Yeah, so that that's that's the plan. So we'll see what, how uh how I'm fucking goes. digging it. Guys, make sure you guys hit this channel and watch all the content on this car. This thing's fucking dope, guys. Thanks, bro. And you guys are getting oh, no worries, bro. Love is love, bro. I appreciate you guys are gonna see his catback exhaust video that he already did on it and he's gonna be releasing the the header video yeah. so by the time you guys see this it's already on his channel when are you releasing your video i don't know yet i yeah. still gotta finish recording this yeah <laughs> mine's probably gonna be out wednesday so yeah. the, the boss is gonna look at me like cocksucker you were at fucking uh, rick's this whole time and you guys i told you to come here so we could finish the mounts 
It's okay. Yeah. I'm coming, Merce. I'm coming. <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, we picked the uh, we picked up the things we, I needed for the Muganiel at G16. Uh, G16 did not have his battery, so we once again have to push the RSX. Damn it, Rick. You're lucky we love you, bro, and you always help us out. We still love you with your clean shaved testicle chin. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Mercer has been here already at work. Uh, obviously, I had to help actually go around the house with the kids and everything. And he's been a busy man. Yeah, man. What's up, you too? Uh, so, we, like I said, we're continuing the vlog. And Mercer has already gone to completing uh, the driver, uh, the passenger side mount. I believe it's complete now, Kev? Yeah, it's all done. So, well, it's not complete. I gotta grind this just to clean it up. But I mean, like the mock up. Yeah, it's done. It's tight. It's and, working. like, guys, that looks a lot better than what Innovative gave us. And, like, man, Merce. Yeah, it came out nice, man. You did a great job. So, what he's doing now, so. I'm working on the. He chopped. The bracket for the driver side mount for the tranny. Yeah. And now he's working on a, a template uh, for the bottom base of the bracket. So the standard bracket comes like this. This goes on the transmission. And then this guy comes like this. And then this used to be a part of here. And then that goes into this guy. So what we're doing right now is I chop that guy. I got a couple of marks on it, uh, making the base template right now for the transmission. So this is gonna be our base. It's not gonna look like that. This is just my template. Um, I'm just trying to find my holes right now. And then I'm gonna build basically a support that's gonna go from this bracket to this plate. And that's gonna be our mount. So that's what I'm working on right now. So the next hour or so, I will be doing that. Um, but it's lunchtime right now. So I'm gonna go and eat. 100% I'm gonna go and do. Uh, he made his outline of the bracket that we were going to be making for the base of the driver's side mount. Yeah, man. So now he's just cutting the cardboard to the outline that he made. And he's going to be replicating it onto a piece of metal. That's the plan. And then he's going to be welding up everything. And then grinding and then all that fun stuff. But right now we are pretty much showing you how Kevin is going about making his custom mounts for the automatic case swap on the 7 gen. Like ideally if we had a hybrid model Civic, we could have just used factory RSX mounts. Cause that's what uh, the other YouTuber uh, YouTubers did. Or were they YouTube? Yeah, one was a YouTuber and one was just a guy who just put it uh, on the channel, like on his channel that he just stuff. Cause he was selling the car and he was showing everybody with the premium case swap and all that stuff. So not a lot of insight on what they did. Uh, the other one was a lot of it was rushed. So we're hoping that with what we have, we can show you guys the procedures. And that's pretty much what it's gonna look like, our plate. And then this guy's gonna go this way. Nice, yeah, you're gonna end up turning that because that's gonna, well, you're gonna cut a little bit more off of there, right? Yeah. But yeah, so eventually it'll be turned and welded. And that's the plan. But it's looking really nice. Let's do it. It's gonna have a lot of clearance. So later on when we decide to put a turbo. Oh, we know. And Mercer's already decided for me and Ashley it's gonna be a sidewinder. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like he at this point, Kevin has a say on whatever goes on both builds, because you know, it's essentially a part of it is because it's like his children. I mean the sidewinder would be best fitted. Um but I mean, and it looks badass having a sidewinder. Yeah, because back here, you guys are going to have the AC and all the heater core stuff, so mm -hmm. we're not going to be able to mount one back here. I mean, it would look sick back here, and then, you know, out of the hood would probably be best. Yeah, but... That uh, you'd have to convince mm, her. No, it's not going to work like that. So our best bet is uh, <laughs> put the turbo here, mm -hmm. eventually, and then with the exhaust and all our piping, well, our exhaust would go down, our wastegate would go down, and then all of our piping it would essentially be easier for one this way and then the opposite this way. So I think that's how it'll be later on. Oh yeah. Just the manifold. I mean, so yeah, the manifold. Uh, we'll have to do some shopping around to see who has the best fitted manifold to sit the turbo just over the transmission. Mm -hmm. We might have to uh, customize the manifold. 
make one customized or reach out to somebody that's making anything um, automatic wise. What did Kyle use for the for the uh, Odyssey? Um, Odyssey? Ooh, I, I would have to go back on. It was his buddy who made it, but uh, I don't know if his buddy's making it anymore. Like I think they used one and then they customized it to fit better in the bay, right? Like the the runners of it, because yeah, you'd have to turn it a little bit more, right, over here. I can't remember the guy's name uh, now, but I I know I watched the episode. Um, so, yeah, that's the idea. When, when we cross that bridge, it's gonna look good. But back to the task at hand to finish off this mount kit, so we can close this video off and then continue with everything else along the process. So I gotta turn uh, this cardboard into metal. Nice. So he has officially made the cut to the template. Looks phenomenal. Now we just gotta drill these three holes uh, to the right side so that way it slides in where the studs go and then test it with the bolt like how we did on the passenger side because you got to make sure it works properly and then the bracket adjust uh, the length of it to fit to this where he will be able to weld after so right now he's going to make his punch for the guide and for the bit to grab onto yeah man that's the point metaphoric Metaphorically speaking, that's, that's the point. That's the point. Alright. Skip. guys so just so I have to notch that there because there is a hump right here so in order for it to clear you see that yep hump. that's what I was doing I was notching it and notching it, it. it sits very nice yeah so I need to make now a spacer that's gonna accumulate for our depth that we don't have here mm -hmm. so that's flat that's gonna be the spacer so that's the next step, and then cut, 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 move it, weld. And then your favorite part is the welding. Yeah, man. That's what it's looking like. It's so, coming along really nice. I mean, we might shape it a little bit more here. Uh, I'm probably going to do a hole for a 10 millimeter ground. So we're going to ground off of this uh, steel plate Steel plate to the chassis. So that's going to be one of our grounding points. Nice. So we'll have the transmission grounded the block grounded and the head grounded afterwards. But I think ahead. So that's what it's looking like. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, guys. So um, Kevin's been doing a lot of cutting and recutting and recutting. Uh, I wasn't gonna bore you guys with that. So he's already working on this bracket to connect to the plate. And as you guys can see, he chopped a little bit more out of here, chopped all this around here. Now he's gonna make the support brackets. Uh, it's starting to come together. A bit tedious, but if you don't have a hybrid model, this would be the best mount kit because the Hasport would not work on the tranny side at all. So uh, it's coming along nicely. A bit of tedious work for Kev, but if you have the patience like he does and you want to, and you see the creation in your head of the final final result, it all pays off in the end. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That's the idea, man. All right, guys, so Kevin was shaving it all down so that both pieces are identical. Yeah, man. And he's setting it up like so. So that way you have maximum support of the mount. So when the bracket and the uh, plate mate with the welding, you have a nice firm, firm hold. Yeah, man, we're just going to cut a hole in here. 
on both of them, so take away some weight. Mm -hmm. but yeah, that's what it's going to look like, something like that. I mean, this is going to be cut because we're going to use this as a support to weld there. This is going to get welded here. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a piece that's going to go in here. So, a little bit more. Oh, we're getting there. A little bit of R&D, but it's starting to look like it was uh, fucking meant to be. It's a mount, meant to it's be. Beautiful. All right, guys. <laughs> so, I, I stepped out, and Mercer was still working away. He drilled both brackets right through the center. They look amazing, the way he has them set up. Now, I believe he's just going to cut the wing right there, so that way you have meat to grab onto and weld, like he explained earlier. Yep. Uh, we're really getting there, guys. It's looking like a full-out mount. Yeah, man. A lot Thumbs of uh, a lot of cutting and everything, you know. It, it's but to be different, we're willing to do it. All right, guys. That is the final result. He's gonna be, I guess, tack welding everything, so that way you can grab it as one piece and start welding a wake of. That's the idea. That's the idea. And you also put a spacer over there for the bolt, mm -hmm. which I don't know if you guys can see. Yeah, you guys can see it right there in the bottom it, it's as if we bought it like this this is a beautiful mount man this is some beautiful fabrication right here like i gotta tack it and see if it'll come off <laughs> i don't even know if it's gonna come off yet let's see let's just tack it oh you mean like to see if the whole thing comes off as one unit yeah hmm, i don't true. know yet if it's gonna come out through this guy Mm -hmm. The one bolt, or if it's gonna have to come out like all three. all six bolts. Well, so only one way to find out. We're gonna try that right now. Let's do it. guys oh all right guys the mount is all welded up letting it cool off this guy did a fantastic job oh my god Put my hats no, I should, shouldn't I? my hats off to mercy he he killed it on the fabrication on this transmission mount yeah man come on nice. it's beautiful bro like, I'm telling you I could not you could not find a better guy to fab yeah, there's a lot of other guys out there. Yeah, well, I don't know them, and I know you, so sticking by what I just said, bro. <laughs> All right, boys. So the K is actually in all four mounts. Uh, it We got a K, essentially, like bolted right up to the, the EL, an automatic K. Yeah, an auto magic K. Uh, really happy with the way it came out. I know it gave you a shitload of work. Yeah, it did, but... But... It pulled through. Dude, we did it. The end result is beautiful. Like that is magnificent. I'm speechless, man. Like I I'm very, very happy and uh privileged to have great customized work like this done on uh the build. So now literally we're just gonna be taking it back off. Uh he's just gotta cut just down here. He's not too happy with that right there, so he's just gonna cut that flat and then he we're gonna paint it all high heat black so it looks all clean. And then uh, we're going to keep trucking along. We're going to drop the motor out to start working on the motor, but that will be tomorrow. Uh, but I think for today, I think we're done. Hey man, what about this being our vanity? That's, that's cute. This right here. Our little transmission cooler. This is the transmission cooler, but just no radiator besides a little tiny one like that. Uh, you'd be lucky if you get down like <laughs> half the track. The motor would be <laughs> overheating. Uh, but yes. Guys, uh, I hope so far you guys are liking the, the automatic build of the K-Swap and we got a lot more to come. So guys stay tuned from this guy who's been uh, MIA for the longest time and the mad scientist himself. Yeah boys. Hey guys, let oh. us know if you guys want us to turbocharge this thing. Yeah. What do you think? 
like thermotizer. Yeah. I need to put blood on it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Why is it so monotone? Let us know if we should turbo turn. Yeah, should we like should we put a snail right there? I mean we were talking about it earlier in the video. Where? Uh you it. know what? I'm gonna put a photo right here over Gilbo's big head and give you a sneak peek. But dude, technically if I put the photo right where your head is, right there, that turbo is the size of your head. It was. So it works out pretty good. See? See? Yeah. But uh guys. Like, comment, subscribe, share the videos, uh, get these uh, content more out. And we're gonna be trying to upload maybe twice a week because we're gonna be having a lot of content and we don't wanna fall behind on all the on all the content I'm showing you guys. So we'll catch you guys in the next vlog. See you in the next one. Yeah, peace.